eight-year-old neighbors Darren Bruff and Natalie Jackson don't realize that their childhood days are numbered, <laughs> that their purpose on this planet is to reproduce and pass on their genes. <laughs> but their immature bodies aren't yet up to the task. Deep in Natalie's abdomen are her ovaries. Inside, her blood feeds half a million spherical cocoons called follicles. Hidden within each follicle is an immature egg. But for now, they're in suspended animation. In Darren's testicles, nothing much is happening either. Though there are millions of cells, there are no signs of sperm. The cells destined to create them lie dormant. <laughs> Natalie's and Darren's sex organs are waiting for a signal that will bring them to life. A signal that will trigger puberty. Puberty begins years before there are any outward signs. No one knows why, but it always starts at night. Driven by the body's command center, the brain. Deep in Darren's brain, a group of cells is activated. For the first time ever, the cells release a chemical signal into the tiny blood vessels around them. Hormones known as gonadotrophins fly through his blood. These chemical messengers carry signals from Darren's brain to the rest of his body. Night after night, the hormones flood into his bloodstream and begin to take effect. Inside his testicles, cells begin to divide. They organize themselves into tubes, building factories which will one day produce sperm. As the years pass, Darren's brain steps up the pace. the signal gets stronger. And the changes taking place in Darren's testicles get faster and faster. Between the newly grown tubes, gonadotrophins seep out and soak into specialized cells, triggering them to produce the male sex hormone. Its name, testosterone. Mom! By the time Darren is 13, Come on out. he has amassed enough testosterone to begin to change his boy's body into the body of a man. The changes in Darren mean he'll soon be able to reproduce. But to be a mature adult, he also has to want to. Inside his brain, testosterone seeps from blood vessels into the fluid which surrounds his brain cells. Soon, it will transform his mind. Next. Nate? Natasha Watson, sir. What's I doing it? Do you know we'll just have to wait till they finish? Natasha, mm. you know David Blaine? He's reading Romeo. 
Right, off you go, David. Yo, yo, yo's what I've got to get. It's Mickey D with my Juliet. Oh, Romeo, oh, but we hit a snag. Why does Montague have to be your tag? Next. Inside Darren's brain, testosterone now soaks through the membranes of dormant cells, triggering a chemical reaction. The testosterone brings to life a group of interconnected brain cells. This is Darren's reproductive circuit. It gives him the desire for sex. I missed twice of singing. Name? Michael Jackson, sir. The worst mistake I ever made was not to ask him where he played. Maybe Darren has something new to cope with. A sex drive. And the girl next door has become the woman of his dreams. That much good and this much bad. It's the only name I ever had. But for you, my love, I would change it now. Just click on my heart and find out how. And this one, you've got to try this one. It's got a tangy smell, and I'm sure that will smell lovely. This one's lovely on as well. I have a smell of that. It's yeah. wonderful, quite refreshing. And what about this one? Now, this one's much nicer. It's much Over the past fun. five years, Natalie's brain has been just as active as Darren's. I've got to try this one. <laughs> But while gonadotrophins transform his testicles, they bring to life her ovaries. The hormone has stimulated a few of the follicles to grow so that the eggs concealed inside them begin to mature. As the follicle wall grows and swells, a new hormone seeps out. The female sex hormone, estrogen, It flows out of the follicles into her blood. Estrogen will drive Natalie's transformation into a sexually mature woman. Don't worry about it, it looks very nice. And as you can see, it's very subtle. Now also we can show you a nice thing. That's gorgeous, like David Blaine. <laughs> yeah, he might be gorgeous, but he can't sing. So? So it's meant to be a musical. But you get to snog the best-looking bloke in school. Yeah. But... Oh, yeah, but nothing. Forget about his singing once you start kissing. Are you wearing perfume? Inside Natalie's brain, estrogen is making permanent changes. Inactive areas of her brain are coming to life. This is probably because the hormones stimulate nerve endings, encouraging them to form new connections. These new circuits fire powerful new emotions. I'm getting a tattoo. You, you are, are not. not. I might have known. Known what? You automatically say no. No, 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 no. Are Natalie's feelings are suddenly no? much stronger, but she hasn't yet learned how to control them. No. You never let me do what I want. You are so predictable. No, we're not. Calm down, dear. I don't even know why you had me in the first place. And while Natalie must learn to live with estrogen, Darren is in the grip of testosterone. Darren, what are you doing? Uh, uh. Darren is trying to cope with a brain that wants sex. A bit. A bit of gardening. Why? What are you doing? Having supper. 
Outside? My dad went mental. I told him I was getting a tattoo. You're getting a tattoo? Where? Well, either here or here. What do you think? His reproductive circuit is interfering with his ability to hold a conversation, leaving him tongue-tied. I'm paying Juliet in the school play. I was there for the auditions. Doing what? Waiting for band practice. Oh, right. I'm gonna be in the play as well. I didn't know you into drama. Mr. Parsifal, he wanted an engineer. A what? Someone who hasn't done it before. Like a virgin? Yeah. I suppose I'll see at rehearsals then? Yeah. Like all men, Darren's hormone levels soar at night. As testosterone rises, his reproductive circuit goes into overdrive and even takes control of his dreams. Next. So we just started where you want it. I don't know. What do you think? Now his reproductive circuit is so overstimulated it sends a signal down his spine to his penis. His penis is constructed of interconnected caverns. Blood rushes in, filling the caverns and making them expand. Darren's penis has swollen to five times its normal size. It's after eight. Bye, Mum. Oh, hi. Hi. Natalie started puberty later than Darren, but she is growing much faster than him and looks more mature. All thanks to estrogen. Gotta run. When estrogen in her body reached a critical level, it triggered a growth spurt. Since then, special plates in her bones have been growing rapidly. To catch up with Natalie, Darren needs his own supply of estrogen. His brain has a remarkable way to manufacture the hormone. It converts excess testosterone into estrogen. Sadly for Darren, it takes time for estrogen to build up, which is why boys seem to mature more slowly than girls, and why girls are usually more interested in older boys. But just as Darren needs estrogen, Natalie needs the male sex hormone, testosterone. Her adrenal glands, which sit on top of her kidneys, pump small amounts of testosterone into her blood. Her blood carries it to her brain, 
where it seeps into the surrounding cells, stimulating her reproductive circuit and giving her the sex drive she needs to further the interests of her genes. All right. Oh, hi. Looking good? Ta, so what's up? How do you fancy going out with me? Going out where? Wherever you want. So? All right. Nice one. There's more to testosterone than creating a sex drive. It also gives Darren drives to help him get sex. He is more competitive and assertive than ever before. You come for band practice, I won't be two ticks. I haven't come for band practice, sir. I want to part in the play. I didn't know you acted. I'm an engineer. Are you now? And I can sing. Darren doesn't know it, but changes inside his testicles are bringing him closer to furthering his genes. Deep within the wall of a tube, a dormant cell is coming to life. The cell divides. The new cell that is formed will become Darren's very first sperm. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet in rap. Montagues versus Capulets with music. Montagues, sopranos all, Capulets, altos and tenors. I want all the Montagues to have unbroken voices. But Romeo's a Montague. I'm a tenor. Exactly. How would you feel about playing Tybalt? I'm Romeo. Romeo. The fiery Tybalt, so wicked, so manly, so much more like you, David. So who's going to be Romeo? Meet your new arch enemy, Darren Bruff. And Natalie, let me introduce you to your new love interest. Natalie thinks she is more mature than Darren, but her body is no closer than his to being able to reproduce. In her ovary, her enlarged follicles continue to grow, but they need to swell to 100 times this size before the eggs contained within them can reach maturity. Darren and Natalie are losing control of their bodies to hormones. The levels of testosterone and estrogen in their blood are rising with every passing day, slowly transforming their bodies to prepare them for sex. One of the main objectives of sex hormones is to trigger changes which will make them more attractive to potential mates. But sometimes the effect is just the opposite. Last night, Darren had a testosterone surge with unfortunate consequences. Deep in his pores are tiny glands called sebaceous glands. Sebum should flow out of the gland and up onto the skin. But Darren is producing so much that it clogs his pores. It becomes a breeding ground for bacteria. The pore is infected. Sebum gave our ape ancestors glossy coats making them attractive to other apes. All that gives Darren is pimples. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's all right. Natalie is luckier. She too produces sebum, but estrogen keeps the levels down, reducing the effects on her skin for now. 
Yeah, you mean you can't even aim. Yeah. What's wrong with his face? He's wearing makeup. <laughs> or pizza face! <laughs> Natalie thinks you're wearing makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Darren's body is overreacting to escalating hormone levels. And pimples are not the only result. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Testosterone has made his genitals so sensitive that even the slightest touch can trigger a response. The caverns of his penis are filling up again. But this reaction is a reflex. His brain is not involved. Darren's penis seems to have a mind of its own. In fact, it's quite common for teenage boys to suffer as many as 20 reflex erections a day. While Darren suffers at the hand of hormones, Natalie is benefiting. Until recently, there were few visible differences between her body and a boy's. But sex hormones are now sculpting her body into a different shape, designed to be attractive to men. Under the influence of estrogen, in Natalie's chest, Fat globules are sucked out of her blood by surrounding fat cells. The cells soak up the fat, and as they expand, so do Natalie's breasts. The same things are happening to the fat cells on her hips and buttocks, giving Natalie the first signs of womanly curves. Oi! What? I'm a mate. We look out for each other. Look, I've had enough of this. I'm going to look at some trainers. Shallow. I know. Shallow's in. <laughs> Testosterone's been nothing but trouble for Darren. But he now has enough for his brain to convert into estrogen, finally triggering his growth spurt. His skeleton is lengthening at a rate of half an inch a month, faster than any time since he was a baby. Being taller will help make Darren more attractive to girls. But in the short term, such rapid growth has its drawbacks. Yo, 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 we in the place to be on the wheels of Steel Capula MC. <laughs> Easy now. Hey, man, can't believe my eyes. That girl's gotta be my prize. Don't go there, that's not for you. She's Capula. None of mine take you. As Darren moves around, his brain must track exactly where every part of his body is to keep his movement coordinated. But now that his limbs have grown, his brain must adjust. No way, Uncle. This is our place. I'm making a song about his show in his face. Maybe I'm glad I'm being mean, it. Don't need no one to wind up there. And because his legs have grown so quickly, his brain just can't keep up. <laughs> 
Darren's hormones are working to make him more and more sexually attractive. His muscles are made up of fibrous strands. Testosterone makes these fibers multiply, causing the muscle to thicken, bulking up his biceps. But the fastest multiplying cells in Darren's body are in his penis. Natalie's sex drive is kept active by testosterone. But the hormone also has a surprise in store. Inside pores in her groin and armpits, testosterone seeps out of her blood and stimulates hairs to grow. Over time, they extend up the pore to the surface of her skin. In the space of one month, Natalie has grown 60 feet of pubic and armpit hair. We have our chemistry. Now for our explosion, the first kiss. Shall we begin from Gone and Live? Gone and live, or stay and die. Love you, girl, and you wonder. It may not feel like it, but Natalie's new hair is another attempt by her body to attract a mate. But believe it is the morning girl. The hairs are designed to trap sweat. In fact, a hairy armpit can hold 30 times more sweat than a hairless one. Bacteria living on her skin feast on the sweat. They excrete waste in the form of gas with a powerful odor. A text from a homegirl saying ciao in three words. Mother, bedroom now. Come out the window before she comes. You should have gone when we saw the sun. B.O. is an outward sign of Natalie's emerging sexual maturity. Our ancestors found it attractive. Come over here and don't you dismay. Ain't going nowhere until you. But in our hygiene conscious world, B.O. tends to have the opposite effect. Ain't going nowhere until you kiss me. More passion, Darren, more passion. <laughs> All the changes in Natalie's body are designed to aid a process still unfolding in her ovaries. Inside, the gonadotrophins have caused one follicle to grow so large that the egg concealed inside it is almost mature. This one follicle is now producing three quarters of all the estrogen in her body.
there's a problem. The bigger it grows, the more gonadotrophins it needs to survive. And Natalie's brain can't yet manufacture enough. Starved of hormones, the follicle starts to die, killing the egg inside it. It stops producing estrogen, causing the levels in Natalie's body to plummet. Soon, the results will start to show. Within two days, there is no longer enough estrogen in Natalie's skin to keep sebum production down. It's Natalie's turn to get pimples. The shortage of estrogen is having even more drastic effects beneath her skin. Inside her womb, layers of cells form a lining designed to sustain a growing fetus. But without estrogen, blood vessels that feed these cells are cut off. In a few hours' time, Natalie's womb lining will die. Natalie, is your man over here? Don't think so, squeaky boy. Don't think so what? I don't think that she's interested. Although, I know you do, um... Speak highly of her! <laughs> Natalie's estrogen levels have collapsed. But Darren's testosterone levels keep going up. Result? Increased aggression. <laughs> For our distant ancestors, Fighting for a mate was a necessary skill for the sexually mature male. In fact, men's brains are wired so that circuits for aggression and sex overlap. Inside Natalie's womb, the cells which make up its lining have died. Now, layer by layer, they begin to shear off. Natalie is having her first period. Mom! Mom! Next door, Darren is about to experience a less visible but equally dramatic change. Sperm production lines have begun throughout his testicles. As new cells are made, they're pushed up against the walls of the tubes. One cell is forced right through the wall. Now, a remarkable transformation begins. The cell's DNA, containing Darren's genes, is squeezed into a tiny head. The rest of the cell forms a long, thin tail. This is Darren's first sperm. Unable to swim yet, the sperm is carried away by contractions of the tube. Blimey. For you. Hi. Simone, yeah. My mum, she's mental. Natalie is suffering all the discomforts of a period. But this first period is unique. 
because it hasn't been triggered by the creation of a fertile egg. Your mum let me in. So what's wrong with you? Oh, it's a woman thing. So you're not coming out? Sorry about that. Maybe I'll have to take someone else to the precinct to watch you get beaten up. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll take Simone. I don't think so. This woman thing's made you dead boring. Oh, get lost! Natalie's first period is a major milestone of puberty, but she's still incapable of reproduction. While Darren is now making sperm, Natalie has yet to make a mature egg. At the age of 13, Natalie's body is locked into a monthly cycle by her brain. Her brain cells drive the release of gonadotrophins. Once again in her ovary, the hormone stimulates follicles to grow, with one larger than any other. The follicles saturate her body with estrogen. It travels to her womb cells and triggers them to multiply. In the space of 10 days, her womb lining has completely regrown. Sorry about you and David. Oh, he's an idiot. So about Darren and you? No, it's, it's not gonna happen for us, not at me. You know where this is heading, don't you? In Darren's testicles, the production line is picking up pace. But it will still be another five years before a sperm factories work at full capacity, churning out 1,000 sperm every second. Now his sperm collect in a chamber, ready and waiting to fertilize an egg. Well. Girlfriend, how fine is you? While Darren's testicles make millions of sperm, Natalie's ovaries concentrate on producing just one perfect egg. This time, the enlarged follicle is doing everything in its power to stay alive until the egg concealed inside reaches maturity. Blood vessels grow all over it to bring extra nourishment. As it reaches a critical size, the follicle sends a signal to Natalie's brain triggering a massive surge of hormones, the biggest pulse of gonadotrophins her body has ever experienced. The hormone reaches the egg inside the follicle, finally stimulating it to mature. No way, Uncle. This is our place. I'll make him sorry that he showed his face. Leave it, young blood. I mean it, dread. Don't need no one to wind up there. Testosterone has one last cruel trick to play on Darren. Gone and leave a stay and die. 
The levels in his blood are now high enough to trigger the cells in his vocal cords to multiply. His vocal cords are having their own growth spurt. As Darren's vocal cords get longer, his voice will get deeper. I could stay, you know I would. I've come so far, it feels so good. But just as in his arms and legs, it's difficult for Darren's brain to properly control his vocal cords, now that they are a different length from those his brain is used to. text from a homegirl saying ciao in three words. Mother, bedroom now. Climb out the window before she comes. You should have gone when we saw the sun. Now Darren can't trust himself to speak at all. <coughs> Farewell to you, my lover and my friend, but I do want a kiss before you descend. Natalie is about to experience the most momentous event of puberty. Her body is ready to release her first mature egg. The wall of her ovary is stretched to the breaking point. The egg bursts out of its follicle and right through the ovary wall. One of her fallopian tubes carries it toward her womb. In two weeks' time, this egg will be swept away in another period. But it's the first of nearly 500 eggs that Natalie will produce. One every month for around the next 40 years. Darren is about to find out that he's reached sexual maturity. Signals from his reproductive circuit tell the chamber which holds his sperm to contract. For the first time, Darren's genes are set free into the world. Darren and Natalie are now capable of reproduction. But it will still be several years before they reach adulthood. Bye, Mom. Humans are the only Hi. animals to experience Hi. such a long, drawn-out puberty. Probably because we need time to learn the complex rules of our species before sex gets in the way. <laughs> 